these are solar panels. So the, these are the cylinder solar panels, the standard rooftop model with a spacing at the density that in 2009 was the standard for the company. Later on they changed the spacing. So. The overhead panels are ones where it's half the density of the panels. You're making half as much electricity, letting essentially more light through for plant growth, and so the plants are, have a better chance to grow. And in the other section we had a screen, a shade cloth, with roughly the same shading level. And fundamentally we saw no differences for most plants. But for a few plants, we saw that even under this very dense shade, the plants could grow well. And these were citrus. And this was citrus. And we did not know why. We still don't know why. But we have, we have an idea. Okay? One, there's two facets to this. When the sun goes across the sky, it makes a strip of shadow with these things. Right now you can't see it because we have all this cloud cover in the sky. I'm actually waiting for the sun to come out so I can show it to you. But I think you can imagine it. You see strips of shade. And as it goes across a leaf, you see this shade traveling across the leaf. So what happens on the leaf surface is you have this intermittent high light, low light, high light, low light. Yes. And we speculated that the plants could take advantage of that somehow. They do more than just simply integrate. Right. Okay. They're doing something else. And so this is something that we call non-steady state photosynthesis. And it's not taught in any course anywhere. It's not written up in the textbooks, but scientists know that there are differences, but in general when scientists look at this they trust us modelers to simply integrate. And so almost everything in the world where people deal with light, they're doing light sums, light integrals, daily light integrals, without any consideration whether that whether the nature of that light is episodic in some way. But so, then in, in nature, it's the same when the plant is here and there is a tree and there is exactly, uh, wind and the leaves, exactly, they do shadow and then exactly. like this. We call this flicker factor. So plants on the forest floor, floor will get bright light sprinkled mm -hmm. in with the overcast. So I, we did some photosynthesis measurements and actually found that the shadow cast by the photovoltaic panels is very different from the episodes of shadow cast by the structure. Because you see you have fairly thick structure in Big various structure. places. So there's times in the afternoon where you get 20 minutes of shade on a leaf, and, and the rest of the time is every minutes. seven minutes. Right, you know, right. And, and when you measure the photosynthesis, you will find that that is enough to shut the thing down, ah, whereas that light does that not. doesn't shut the thing down. That's science. Love it. That's so, so cool. That's what we do. But it doesn't explain why plants could cope with this. Okay. It doesn't explain because it Because they enough. adapt to change. So there was one other thing that I speculated, and that is, it's something you can't see right now, but there's something here that I call magic light. Okay. Magic light appears in the sky. And I'm, I'm, I wish the sun was out because you would see it. You cannot see it when the sun is not out. But we have this arc in the sky of where the sun is refracting through the glass of the tubes. And consequently, when you stand here, when the sun is out, you will look at that and you have to squint even to brilliance. look at where the sun is not. Yes. Okay. It's almost like and, an amplifier. And every plant sees this light. Yeah. Okay. So it's almost like there's a light bulb on. Right. Like, like mm. high pressure sodium lamps are on at the same time. Right. It's kind of right. like that. So we, calc we looked for whether that much, whether it was enough light to cause this difference. And it also didn't prove anything conclusive. So we still don't know if it's the magic light or the episodic light or something else, or a combination of all these things, we still don't know. But I would say it's a forefront of science. Very cool. One thing that we did learn was, because we saw this and had this idea about episodic kind of stuff, we decided to go into the lab and grow some plants by pulsing light yes. for like seven and a half minutes yes. on, seven and a half minutes off, basically. To Just emulate. Kind of, yeah. How did that work out? The exact opposite. Okay. We shut the plant down completely. Completely, because it wanted faster pulses. Well, I don't know what it wants. It hasn't it, told me the answer. Something different. But... You don't know how to speak plant. But, but we basically didn't do this. Okay, so, but it was the most amazing thing to see that we 
could get a big William pepper plant, speak plant with you know, a certain <laughs> daily light integral, but taking that same light integral and spacing it out in this way, yeah. we ended up completely shutting the plant down. I love it. That is so cool. That is so cool.